I can't imagine being in the spot of the WWE talent where they have to pretend like they're excited to be in Detroit of all goddamn places for SummerSlam. Can you imagine? Detroit? Oh, I mean, yeah, it's not Cleveland, but is it really any better? It's Detroit, for God's sakes. One of their best products they've produced is Kid Rock. Need I say any more? And you could even see early on in the night, like there was a smoky haze that filled Ford Field, which you had to assume was the ass and pit stank of those nasty ass fans there in Detroit. <laughs> Dear Schlegetti, how dare you throw these strays at us? It's better than the other type of strays you can catch in Detroit, so sit down and shut up. Let's talk about SummerSlam, bitches. At least the stupid Kid Rock piece was only at the beginning. Like, we couldn't have done Eminem instead. But it was a big nothing burger at the end of the day, so that's good. We dive right in. It's Logan Paul versus Ricochet, and this was a fantastic opener. Easily the best work that Ricochet has done, in my opinion, in a long time. You know, best thing about it is these two guys had decent chemistry. The match flowed well. Logan Paul gets a needed win. But when you use the brass knucks like he does, it doesn't hurt Ricochet. So Ricochet is not losing to a non-roster guy clean. And most importantly of all, what it did for the first time and maybe ever, it made me want to see a return match for Ricochet against somebody. I mean, that's what matters most is the return match. And they have me wanting one. You want to do one at the next pay-per-view, Survivor Series, whatever, I'm down for it. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar is a different story in terms of, I agree that this was the best of their series of three matches, but we still never found out why these two were beefing, which I always thought was dumb. And I'm just glad it's over at this point. This feels like a tremendous waste of time for all parties involved. You know, from Brock Lesnar's shorts ripping during the match to the stupid turnbuckle spot. You know, like, I thought Cody was supposed to be a hero. And it's this whole thing of trying to make Cody some type of sympathetic figure. He's not a sympathetic fucking figure. And when the WWE actually figures that out and books him differently and appropriately based off of him and his history and his lineage, they could actually make some real, real money with him. Until that, they'll just be fumble fucking around. The finish of the match, though, was kind of dumb, and especially that handshake at the end. Oh, you get my support. You've got my stamp of approval. Fuck that shit. The perfect stupid ending to a stupid feud that we never figured out why the hell it was even happening. Then you shift over to the SummerSlam Battle Royal. And how messed up, right? Austin Theory goes from beating John Cena at WrestleMania to less than five months later, he's just another guy in this Battle Royal. He doesn't even get a fucking entrance. He's supposed to be that dude. What the hell happened? Furthermore, where the fuck is Bobby Lashley? He wasn't booked for WrestleMania. You had two nights you could have done that. He wasn't booked here for SummerSlam. Is he hurt? Or is the WWE just fucking stupid? All that really matters with this Battle Royal, though, was was LA Knight going to win? Yay! He won a meaningless Battle Royal. At least he won. At least he got some goddamn shine. That's all that matters. And now what it comes down to is how... As it always does, WWE is going to follow up on it or ultimately does not. Um, so the first three matches of this show had me in a pretty good spot. And I was dreading like when this match would come. Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, MMA rules match. MMA rules in a WWE ring for a WWE match. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, this never had a fucking chance. At least Ronda Lousy, it sounds like, is going to be gone. Good and fucking riddance to her. You talk about somebody whose star has fallen in the past couple of years. It's her. Holy hell. And I'm sorry. This is the type of shit that should have been on a Raw or a SmackDown. I guarantee, he guarantee he, that Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch could have done better than this shit show. You'd be hard-pressed to tell me otherwise. So that was a bit of a downer. And try as they might, the Intercontinental Championship match, Drew McIntyre and Gunther, they tried to bring the crowd back, but it's really, really hard after they just watched that abortion of a match. Um, but it was standard kind of hard-hitting fare for both of them. I don't think it was the best I've ever seen out of both of them, but it was still pretty good. 
know, the crowd was starting to come back from the dead. But it's really, really hard after that shit bomb that just got dropped on them in the middle of the floor, field with Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey. It's hard to really recover from that. They tried. But there's only but so much you could do. They're not miracle workers, for Christ's sakes. And then you get to the World Heavyweight Championship match. Finn Balor challenging Seth Rollins. And I was more impressed with Finn Balor in this match than I can remember in quite some time. You know, even from the very beginning, from Finn Balor having seven written on his shoulder to Seth Rollins struggling like hell to fit into that vest that he wore seven years ago when Finn Balor hurt his shoulder and had to relinquish the title. Like, there's actually some storytelling here from the very beginning. There's actually a fucking reason for this match to happen. Outside of it just being for the championship. Even better. And these guys actually worked. Now, this match was an overbooked hot mess if there ever fucking was one. Yet somehow, some way, it worked out really, really well. And they really got the crowd at the end. I was surprised Damian Priest didn't cash in. But we'll see where they go from here. This worked. This legitimately worked. I was impressed with this. And it was this at this point in time, I'm like, okay, man, that was really good. We're going to get to the main event, Tribal Combat. And then I remembered, ah, fuck. There's still a women's championship match that has shoehorn Charlotte Flair squeezing her fucking way in there. And in case you forgot, Charlotte always, always, always finds a way to shoehorn herself into a story where it can become a triple threat match and she makes it absolutely suck. She did it before at WrestleMania. Why the hell would you think it would be any different at a SummerSlam? This bitch fucking sucks. And it's about high time we call out anybody that thinks that this fucking great value version of her father, the Transformer herself, is any fucking good. What is it about her that is good? She has no mic skills, no charisma. She's a great athlete, yet all her shit looks like shit. That botchy bitch. The fuck is wrong with you? And he's certainly not hot. No matter how many faces she gets put on. And some of you are going to say, well, Bianca Belair is basically Charlotte Flair. Sure. Bianca is Charlotte. But with looks, a natural body, charisma, athletic ability, functional skills, the ability to execute her shit and make it not look like crap, a reason to actually want to fucking watch her matches. But they're exactly the fucking same. This match... All three of these ladies I thought were dog shit. The whole spot with Bianca Belair and the fucking knee. I thought she injured the right knee and now she's selling the left knee. Make up your fucking mind here. This was stupid. It was a piece of shit. One of the worst matches I've watched this year. And that's saying something considering I had just watched about an hour before Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler absolutely stink up Ford Field. They should have had EO Sky come out ten minutes before Fucking read the crowd and read what's going on and say, nah, fuck this, we're going to call an audible. Have EO Sky go down and cash in then. And that's all it was. Yeah, Bianca wins so that way EO Sky can fucking come out and cash in. Which is fine. It was a moment the Detroit crowd loved. They could have saved us all 10 minutes of our lives that we will now never get back. God, this fucking match sucked. And once again, I'm very confident, guaranteed, that Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch could have been better than whatever the fuck this Triple Threat Women's Championship match was. And then we get to the main event. Tribal Combat. Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. Main event Jey. Well, main event Jey. Once you started staring down your cousin, you started getting that overwhelming feeling of dread that comes from that graph that shows how much you fuck around is how much you find out, bitch. Now, some of you are going to talk about maybe that this match moved very slowly. This match does move slow when it involves Roman because he actually tells a fucking story. Because the things that they do matter. It's slow, but it doesn't feel slow if that makes sense. But it takes time to get into it because that's the style of the match. And that's the type of match that works. And I know now everybody's going to sit there and bitch about, What the fuck, Jimmy? Where did this come from? Why did he turn on Jay? A couple of reasons, ding-dongs. Number one, he's probably pissed about the fact that this spot in the main event at SummerSlam for the Undisputed Universal Championship basically came at Jimmy's expense. Jay's got that fucking spot. He said, we've been in that spot before. We've been jealous before. People change. 
People get reminders. And number two, probably just as importantly, you got to imagine all those DUIs that Jimmy has over the fucking years. Those legal fees aren't nothing. Therefore, he sees Jey Uso as the champion. He knows that that means less money for Jimmy Uso. He sees Roman Reigns as the champion. He sees that's more money for Jimmy Uso. It's not fucking hard to figure out. Oh, what are you going to be the story? Because now they're going to split off Jimmy and Jay and it's going to be a distraction and get them away from the bloodline type of shit. That's what this is all about. I know a lot of people probably aren't that hyped up about this finish, but I loved it. I was legit excited. I said, that's got to be Jimmy. That's got to be Jimmy. And it was, and I popped. So fuck you if you don't like it. You're entitled to your opinion and I'm entitled to mine. A lot of you are the same ones that'll talk about, well, Charlotte Flair is really good, which invalidates your fucking opinion because no, not, not every opinion is legitimate. You can either like or not like Jimmy turning on Jay and the finish of this match of tribal combat. That's fine. But saying Charlotte Flair is a great talent in, is an invalid opinion because there's absolutely nothing to fucking back that up no matter how much WWE pumps that propaganda down your damn throat. So there's a difference. But overall, a decent night. Two women's matches that fucking suck that I point to and I say, yeah, WWE deserves the criticism. Becky and Trish would have been much better in either one of these. In terms of the other kind of marquee matches, the other matches on the show, I thought they all delivered in their own way. So it was in general a pretty good night, another good premium live event. Although this shit still found a way to go four hours. What happened to the days of where you could get this shit done in three hours? That's all I'm saying. 